Well, all right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave. And so far we've been going over how to build a compact motion simulator. Now, I do want to tell you a couple things. Wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> That's just another start to a boring video that you won't watch. But I want you to watch this whole thing because it's important. And because you guys have been checking with me and staying along with the channel, I'm gonna be giving away something super special from me to you. It's just gonna be a quick contest to win a controller. I built it. Let me tell you a little bit about it. All right, so it's gonna be a quick drawing to win this controller board. So it has three IBTs. It has an Arduino that's plugged in and it's got a 12 volt DC fan. It's already programmed and it's ready to go. Basically, it's going to be the thing that, that's going to be running this rig in this video. So what you get is the Arduino Uno R3. It already has the programming, but you, you may have to reset the COM port and I'll show you how to do that. It has on top of it the Electro Cookie. It's all wired up. Now the DC 12 volt fan, that's running off of your input to 12 volts. We've got three of these IBTs. The fan will keep them cool. Uh, and we have the potentiometer mounts right here. On the side, we have outputs to the motors. So these two orange wires are going to one of your motors. The two yellow wires are going to another motor. And then I'll put two more wires here that'll go to your traction loss. We've got 12 volts coming in. Now that's one heck of a prize, my friends. Now let me tell you how you can win it. Okay, so the rules are very simple. First of all, you have to be a subscriber. So hit that subscribe button and you have to watch the whole video. Give it a thumbs up and in the comments, after you watch the whole video, write in DMAX controller. And that's it. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so this is going to run until February 29th. Okay, this is 2024. So the last day of February is the last day to enter. So you just need to write, watch the whole video, make sure you're a subscriber. And in the comments, write DMAX controller. You can write anything you want after that. But I, whoever writes that in, I'm going to write their names down, print them out. I'm going to draw their name out of a hat on my next video. All right, so let's get back to the boring video. But please watch. Remember to subscribe and all of that stuff so that maybe my channel can grow a little bit. All right, guys, let's go. Now, I do want to tell you a couple things. Uh, for the last month or two, I've been a little bit sick. My vision was kind of getting worse and worse and worse. I finally went to the doctor. They said, my blood pressure is too damn high. So they put me on some pills. The, the, the problem was my, um, it was hitting, it was doing something to the optic nerve. So everything was blurry. I couldn't do any soldering. I couldn't, I couldn't even really race or, or do anything like that. Until just yesterday, I jumped in this thing, no motion, and did a, a couple of races with the ACF. But, uh, so that that's the main thing. I just, just can't see, I can't make any, uh, make any videos. But anyway, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get this thing to, we're going to get some motion on this thing. Now, we've already built it up to this point, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, I couldn't see. I went ahead and I, I welded up this uh, TV stand. Basically bought something from Harbor Freight. It just extends. It's not hooked. 
it's not hooked to the rig or anything. It just has a simple A-frame or frame design. It's just got these uprights and it slides along either side in case I need a TV because, you know, like I said, I was having trouble seeing. So I kind of put this thing, I don't know what it is. Maybe, oh, it's this 32, so 32 inch. But I didn't know if, um, you know, I should make it really big or whatever. Anyway, so I did that while I was gone. But let's take a look at the Electro Cookie. So in the other video, I ran the wires. So we've, bought, we've got power wires to the motor. And it doesn't matter. Like, these are agnostic. They don't, they're not battery up wires. They're just motor wires. And the motors go two different directions. And I also ran uh, this Cat5 cable. I just cut off um, a signal wire a power and a ground and we need to terminate those on the electro cookie but I did that on a couple of these things also there is a 12 volt uh, brushless fan that I'm going to be running um, as you can see electro cookie is pretty cool and there's not a lot of uh, congestion with the wiring like when I was soldering it but, but you just got to be a little bit careful and follow the the directions on the schematic or the wiring diagram provided by xsimulator.net. I've got the motors coming in through here. I decided to mount the power connections on the side of it. That way I don't have to take off the top. It's easier for me to access. And if I need to swap wires on the motors, I can do so pretty easily. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off these motor wires right here now so because we're going to do these one at a time so just kind of loosen them up and there they are so we have power and ground coming in this side which uh, provides powers uh, and ground to the IBTs off of each IBT if you look in the diagram each IBT needs power needs ground and one of the motors uh, motor wires runs off of here so i've got one set of motor wires these orange ones that are going to be going to one of the motors now like i said in the other video i made them color coded so this would be all one particular motor this is going to be a different motor and then the traction loss motor is going to be right here and That'll be these wires, these blue ones. Okay, so the last thing is this little cord. This is the Arduino plug-in. It goes straight into the Arduino, and that's what we're gonna be using to plug into the computer. Okay, we really wasn't sure how to, how to do this because I am working on a laptop, so I took, this is uh, the Arduino. I've got the wheel, the pedal, Probably should mark this. This is a powered USB hub, um, sound card, whatever. It comes down and the entire hub plugs into a USB 3 on the computer. Now you guys are lucky enough to have um, a desktop or something like that. It's a lot simpler to plug different things in. Laptops have limited resources. It's just got a couple USBs here and then one on the other side that I'm going to be using for VR. So I'm just going to plug it in or plug the hub in. And so you want to go down here to the little windows thing, push start. And in here type in device manager, D E V. Okay. It's already spelled it out. Device manager, just hit enter. And we want to look for, uh, ports, com and LPT one. So right here we have, the USB serial device on COM3. Now this is how you're going to find out what COM port you're on. Don't unplug the hard drive. I'm going to unplug the USB. Okay, so that's gone now. That's this here. That's the hub. We're going to plug it back in. And let's see what happens. Okay, so there it is. It's 
it's back again. We know for future reference that the Arduino or that the Arduino is going to be plugged into COM3 because that's the only uh, serial device on here. The pedals are different. The uh, wheel is different. It, they, they don't show up the same as a COM, COM port. Okay, before we just jump in on all this stuff, you want to make sure that your your Uno is actually actually does work before we do anything to it. So we're going to take it out of the package, and we're going to plug it into the computer. Um, or just go ahead and plug your USB right in there. Um, let's plug it into the computer. So as soon as you find a USB port to plug it into, plug it in. It should start blinking. Now, the program that's in it right now is a, a one second on and one second off blink. We're going to modify that real quick just to you know, make sure that, that everything is talking. And I'll show you exactly where you can find this information on Windows 11. So, if you go to System here, you go to, oops, just go to System. And we go to Bluetooth and devices. And then click right over here to this little arrow. And it's gonna list the COM ports. If you've got more than one type of thing plugged up. Now I'm gonna unplug it. And it went away. Plug it back in. And there it is right there. All right, so you definitely want to make sure that this is actually working before we do anything to it, because if it's not working and you do a bunch of stuff to it, you're A, you don't know if it worked in the first place, and it's definitely not going to work after it doesn't work. So plug it in, make sure it, the light blinks, um, make sure that you can see it on the computer, and <laughs> then we can start wiring because we're going from the known, which is this does work, to the unknown. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the um, Arduino and I'll show you how to, I've shown you how to download this, this, the IDE, how to blink the light on the Arduino to make sure it's talking. You want to open You want to open the SMC3, and once you before you burn the SMC3 information or the sketch into the Arduino, you want to set it up for mode two. It's probably going to say mode three down here, but we want to set it up for mode two, and then just go uh, sketch and. You could compile it, but you could just upload it. Now, I've already done that here. If I did it again, it's not going to make any difference. It's just going to do its thing. It's going to take a little bit of time. As long as you get no red uh, warning lights here or warning text here or for syntax errors or anything like that, you'll be fine. You just get, give it a second to do it. And it burned it into the Arduino again. Not a big deal, but we're all set. And that's the SMC3INO file that you're going to be doing that. Now, you've also downloaded the SMC3 utilities file. And we're going to need to do one other thing. So you have your SMC3INO uh, file. This is the file that, that, that that's the sketch that you burn into the Arduino. Now, there's a configuration file for, you've got SMC3 Utilities, which is an application that's an executable file. You've also got this SMC3, SMC3 Utility Configuration setting. It's a text file. So when it comes up, you can just open it with a text editor like Windows, Notepad, something like that. The only thing you want to change on here is this COM port. It's going to say something else. It's going to say like four, you know, something like that. 
but you want to change it to three and then you just save it. So I'm going to backspace. I'm doing this on the ground with a laptop. So, and because it's on, because we found the Arduino on COM3. So this, this way we just file and save it. And then you don't need to do this. And you only need to do it once unless you change and your Arduino stops work and you find out that it's on a different COM port. Most likely it's going to be on three on the Windows type of devices, but you never know. So I just showed you how to do it. And then you got the executable file, which is SM3 C3 uh, utilities. Now I can open it here, but I have it on the desktop. Now, right now, we're going to take a look and we have it on COM3. If it's not showing here, you're going to get a different error. Like, say, here, I'm going to unplug it. And we're going to, I get a little warning light. I'm going to, we've set it up for COM3. I'm going to, I'll show you what it, what it does if, if it's not hooked up. So it's going to be, it's trying to establish communications. It's trying to establish it on COM3, and it says, ah, can't find it. You can abort, retry, or ignore. I would just check your, I would abort it. Plug it back in. <laughs> I'm only doing this because, you know, things go, things can go a little bit weird. All right, so we're going to start it again. It's, remember, with that SMC3 uh, configuration file it says it's going to be looking for it on com3 all right we're getting this thing going but remember hit subscribe watch the whole video and in your in in the comments if you want to win the control box for this rig right in there dmax controller so if your name is in the hat i'm going to pick out a name on my next video it's going to be live and whoever gets it wins it i'm going to send it to you and that's that's the way that goes all right so back to the video just remember hit that like hit that subscribe all right so this is going to be a little bit difficult for me to do and record and all all at the same time but what we want to do is we want to set the rig for level ride so be and and then adjust our potentiometers um, and get them um, tightened down on the shaft of the motor while it's level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the motors around a little bit and get and basically get the platform, the top frame level, and then I'm gonna work on setting up the potentiometers and getting that green line like right in the middle. I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to hook up the potentiometer using uh, this aluminum coupler you have to make your your little template now this is just uh aluminum i kind of just shaped it out and made sure that everything fits in as best i can now remember these these hall effect sensors have ooh, don't want to lose those there's a little washer and a nut so that's going to hold it on. All right, so I've loosened up the pins on this uh, coupler. So I have the uh, I have the quarter inch bolt going through, and I just I I tightened it up and I just cut off the end. Now we're going to put on the coupler, and it's loose. It spins around. We tighten it up with uh, this little thing, but we're not going to do that yet. But if we tighten it up, it's locked on there. I don't want it locked on there right now. I'm going to loosen it up. It's kind of a pain to do it. So I, I like to have this aluminum uh, support down out of the way so I can get my hands in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the Hall Effect sensor on. I'm not going to screw these down yet. Let's kind of get them maybe started a little bit. And then this is going to slide right into the uh, 
sensor or into the uh, let's see now it should slide in I'm just getting all these things lined up that just takes a minute and it wants to pop off but that's okay because we're gonna tight we don't have it just getting these all lined up at the same time takes a little bit of uh, going through so go ahead and tighten it up half inch so that's just attaching the sensor to this aluminum brace and right now I, I don't I don't want it tight I just want it I want it tight on the on the hall effect I just tighten it up here so when the hall effect spins it's going to spin around uh, this thing. So there's a little bit of adjustment that you can do with by using an aluminum plate like this. You can kind of bend it, move it around, however you want to, to get it to line up as best you can. That's, uh, so, now I've used these, these uh, 180 degree Hall Effect sensors before. So I got to unsolder the ground, the power, and the signal, but, hey, you know, if this thing was tightened up, let's just say it's tight, and I move the motor, the motor, motor's moving, you can see that the sensor moves with the motor, and it, it takes out any of the, you know, difference in pitch or something like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I just thought I would show this, because um, sometimes I skip steps, but I didn't want to skip a step on this. So this is just temporary. I have got a four by four in here and I'm going to try to make it a little bit, it needs to come up just a little bit and this will make it a little bit easier to, uh, to set everything up. Put that in there. So remember, watch the whole video. I know it's going to be a little bit boring, but in order for my channel to grow, YouTube wants to see that you guys are actually watching this stuff and not just clicking off. So watch the whole video, maybe try to learn something. This is going to be super important on setting your SMC3 up, and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing it on this rig. You can put a, a level on it if you want, or you can eyeball it. I'm going to eyeball this one. And I'm looking at it. It looks pretty level. So when you turn your rig on, it's going to go from the down state down in front. It's going to pop up to this particular uh, front elevation. Remember, every all the weight is going to be on the U-joint with U and everything like that but uh so you want to get this nice and stable these two pieces of wood seem to work and now we're going to set the uh potentiometers to read right in the middle right next to the blue line i put this on motor one and the green line it's it's kind of high so what I want to do is adjust the potentiometer. This is going to be motor one because of the colored wires that I have. This one's going to be motor two. I'll be taking one of these little Allen keys, adjusting this until the green line comes down and hits the blue line. All right, so there are two of these Allen uh, screws that you know you're going to need to loosen up so you want to make them available or at least the best that you can so that you can get to them and you'll see what i mean if you have them upside down uh let's just see if we can pop this out Okay, I've got it popped out. So I have it disconnected from the motor shaft. What I'm gonna do is gonna twist.
twist the potentiometer just a little bit until I get it the green line to align with the blue. I'm going to shove it back in and tighten it down. Make sure they're all tightened down. So let's take a look at the screen. So you can see if I twist this, I can go all the way down or back up. And I'm just barely moving it. Now you want to align it right here along the blue line. So take a take another look. I'm going to drop it down. And then I'm going to move it over here. Now if I if I take it and I twist it all the way around, it's going to come up here and it's not going to do anything else until it's going to do this weird thing where it drops straight down until it gets to the sweet spot right now. See? And I try to align it as best I can to the blue line. And right now is where I want to clamp it down. And just keep watching the screen as you're clamping it down. Tighten a little bit on one side. Make sure the green line uh, stays where it is. Tighten it down on the next side. Make sure the green line's not moving. Okay, now I can um, do a little bit more tightening. And this motor should be set. We're gonna do the same thing with, with the other motor, or the other potentiometers. Uh, I'm gonna switch it over to motor two, that's this one see where it's sitting at and it's high too so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of adjustment but once you're done adjusting this make sure that they're tight go through the full range of, of motion with it um, just to make sure that you're actually in the sweet spot because they're only gonna read like about that much the rest of the time it's just gonna be off the chart as soon as you get towards the sweet spot the green line is gonna come up or down and then you'll be able to manipulate it and take a look but let me get this one set and just take your time doing this I got no distractions right now I'm not under any pressure by anybody uh, to do anything else so here we go I pop this one loose I'm gonna twist it around a little bit and see how it's reacting if it doesn't do anything like if it just is down here and no matter how much you twist, nothing happens. One of your wires is not, uh, either your power, your ground, or your signal wire is not, not hooked up right. So just spin it around until, until it comes up and then comes back down. I'm right on the blue. Now I'm going to shove this back in. And see if we got oh it didn't move okay that's good so we're going to tighten it up just a little bit i know this is a little bit of a kind of a pain in the butt compared to the hoses but i'm trying it this way get it tight keep an eye on the on the green line make sure it didn't move or migrate too much I'm taking a look it's perfect I'm just going to tighten it up because it's seated on there now then I'm going to remove the wood box should be fine now I want to look at these as I remove the wood box because um, we should get the potentiometer move back or the green line moving back and forth All right, so the screen should be showing motor two. That's this one I'm just going to try to take this and move it away 
okay? The potentiometer should be moving. That's okay if it goes away from the target line. This one, a big uh, four by four. Set. You can see the line moving, and back to rest. All right. So we're only going to do these two. The traction loss is the third motor, and we just need to line it up in the middle. Get the potentiometer set on the middle and that should be good to go. So before we continue, let's talk a little bit about safety. Make sure that you have an ability to shut off the 12 volts. Now, what I'm, what I'm using is the battery, uh, my truck battery. Um, it's an 850 amp uh, battery and I have two emergency stops. With, well, I've got an on and off right here. So I'll turn this to on and then I've got an on and off switch over here. That's the emergency one. So this is this will allow the battery to get voltage to this switch. And this switch over here allows the rig to turn on and shut off. But you got to have that and just in case something smokes or um, catches fire or whatever. I, look, this is all experimental science. Although thousands of guys have done it, you still could do something wrong. Even I've done some stuff that's not quite right. So you just want to be sure that you can shut off the power and, um, you know, in case there's a, uh, some kind of mishap. All right, so take two. I just recorded a bunch of stuff. I didn't hit record. Anyway, um, where was I? I was going to say, make sure that your, your fan is blowing down on the components. Um, possibly, you should have already done this, but let's talk about it again. You one of these uh, multimeters, you should already have something like this to check for continuity. I put this thing on ohms or the speaker, and if you check between positive and negative on the battery, and if you get a short, that's a problem. If you do have a short or the noise comes out, don't turn all this stuff on yet. You gotta figure out why, because it should not have a short. Like I said, this is all experimental science and you know, it is easy to hook something up wrong. It's not that complicated of a wiring diagram but there are quite a few things to do. You just do them one little piece at a time. You could check your work with a multimeter. That would be even better. That's what I had to do with the electro cookie. Even though, you know, it, it, it says where you're hooking the wires to. Um, last thing, let's, let's refer back to the Eximulator.net page. Now the link for this page is in the description on the description of every single video that I do so that you can refer to it. So you don't have to ask me, well, how do I wire this up? Well, I even tell you on the video, it's in the description. So it's probably like the third thing down. Anyway, uh, let's go to that page. Let's try to get this first motor working. Well, we know we have it hooked up right, at least we think we do. Um, I have the motor, these orange wires hooked up to it. And um, we know the potentiometer is reading the position of the motor shaft. Okay, so we're going to read on this page. Disconnect the power. Make sure that SimTools is not running. Wire up your Arduino. Run the SMC3. Set KPKI K to minimum, minimum 000 for all the motors, which we did. We're going to set the clip limits and 
the uh, max limits. Now, set the KP to 400. So right over here, we got it at 400. If you notice the motor is not doing anything, it's not, I don't, I can move it with my hand, so it's not really doing anything. I've got a green line down here, it's kind of fuzzy, just don't worry about that for right now. We're, we're going to put the, we're going to move pulse width maximum up a little bit until the motor just starts moving. So we got 50, now let's smooth it out a little bit, 60. 70, 80, 90. Okay, so it's moving. And as you can see, the green line is kind of converging with the green line is converging with the blue line. Now what it says, slowly increase that. At some point, it'll start moving towards the blue target. If, uh, if it's not wired wrong, it goes the other direction which we may run into, um, do this for each motor. So we're gonna leave this, as, we're gonna do what they say, we're gonna leave it like this. We're gonna put power to the next motor and try it with the, with the other motor, all right? So I turned off this box, see the fan's not spinning. Um, and I'm gonna wire this up. Doesn't matter which way you wire this up, because you got a 50-50 shot of it being correct. So I'm just going to run these wires down. All right, so they're both wired in. I'm going to turn this box on. I'm going to look for smoke. Shouldn't be any, but we'll see. Turn it on, make sure my fan is spinning, and no fire is coming out. Nope, looks good. All right, so we're on motor two. That's this motor. And we're going to see if this green line, when we move the pulse width maximum, when we move it, hopefully the green line will intersect with the blue. We're going to go ahead and start pumping it up a little bit, maximum to 20, 50, 60. And we're looking to see if it moves. 70. It's starting to move but then it stops and the green line is not moving at all. 80, 90, 100, it's going the wrong way. So let's, let's get it back to zero and I'll tell you why. We have a problem. It's an easy problem to fix. So the, and I wanted to show you that. What we're gonna have to do is swap the motor wires around. The two yellow wires that's, that, that are hooked to this motor, we need to flop their direction because the green line, A, it didn't go the right direction. The motor was going opposite, looking for uh, a reading. And B, the, you could tell by the, the green line, the potentiometer shaft, or the motor shaft potentiometer reading, wasn't, they weren't doing anything the same. So it was going in the opposite direction. So let's swap that motor wire around, try it again. So like they were saying, just hook up one motor at a time in case you run into problems. Um, and and this is this will simplify things. A lot for you too. I guess I'm taking these off. The box is off. And I'm going to swap the wires around. So you're not swapping the battery. Do not swap the battery power. Swap your motor wires, your M wires going to the um, IBTs. So I've got that one swapped. All right, now that the motor wires are swapped, you, you don't need to mark them because you probably, I mean, you could if you want to put a piece of tape on one of them, make sure that that one's facing that way. But as long as you're getting the concept, the motor wires can be flip-flopped around if the motor's going in the wrong direction to initially. 
All right, so let's get back to the test. All right, so I have the emergency stop. I turned it back to on. I'm looking at the fan. And like I said, set the KP to 400. So we put it to 400. And then slowly increase pulse width maximum. Okay, so here we got motor two is on. We see our green light and we're going to maximum up a little bit 24 to 50 60 70 80 okay this one kicks off about a hundred and you can see it moving and it says just do it right there you don't have to do it any further yet but so we're just gonna leave it at that and we'll see what happens we're going to save this, save the settings, and we're going to say initialization, and we're just going to save it. So we have both motors um, at least semi-working. Now, what we want to do is, since we're on motor two, let's put it on a... Let's put it on motion and just see what happens. Okay, so it's it's going to be tracking and trying to track um, the target blue line. There is some problems here where it's not really tracking it very good. It's not keeping right with it. So if we if we we want to increase the pulse width reverse. See if that helps. That's the motor in reverse. 90, 100. Well, it it's not really helping yet. So let's put up the minimum just a little bit. And what we want is we want the green line to uh, follow the blue line. There we go. We're, we're, we're getting better. Okay, I think we're hitting... We're getting this good spot. I'm not sure yet. So you just got to keep messing around with these uh, settings until you get the the motor tracking as best as as it can. Let's try the maximum a little bit. That's a little bit better. Okay, so a little bit better. We'll do it at 120. Let's see. And we'll do this one at 120. Okay, now it's tracking much better. So you just want to keep tweaking these settings until it tracks it almost exactly. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Now's the time to jump into the chair. Now that we've got the two uh, Hall Effect potentiometers, centered the thing seems to be kind of moving we want to put our full weight in the chair to do this next part on smc3 then we'll be done with smc3 for a while i mean you can always go back and tweak these settings but let's jump in the chair all right so we're going to look at motor one that's going to be this one over here and if you want to you can look at my settings here i've got the kp at 430 the KD at 10 and KS at 100. I'll talk a little bit about those, but those are the PID loop parameters that kind of tell the motor to speed up, get to that point, and if it overshoots and goes too far, um, it'll back it down, or at least does a calculation to help back it down. The uh, minimum pulse width is 60, Maximum is 200 and reverse at 190. 
Yeah, let me see if I can bring up the X Simulator page. So I'm bringing up the X Simulator page. We're just kind of going through this step by step. I'm going to go scroll down to here to where it starts talking about SMC3 Windows Utilities. Okay, so it kind of gives you an overview of what we're, we've been doing. And there are tuning parameters. Now, we talked about clip limits and max limits before, but basically the max, if the green line hits the max limits, it's going to shut off your motor. So if your motors are shutting off, maybe your max limits are too uh, restrictive. The clip limits, that's these orange lines right here, You can see them moving. Let me see if I put it on 10. Yeah, you can see them moving. There's, there's the max way down here. That's the red. The clip is going to be the orange. When it hits the orange line, when the green line from the, the reading from the potentiometer hits the orange line, it's going to try not to go any further. It's going to try to break the motor or kind of put the motor in a, a reverse state so it slows it down so it doesn't hit the max limits. Right now we want to get these about oh, maybe 150 oh. we do want the motors to be able to shut off if they go too far so you kind of just set these things up. I'm going to run through a manual test. Now, now look at my settings. My settings, I've got the pulse width minimum on 60, maximum on 200, uh, and reverse at 190. You want your, your, your sample rate to be 35 kilohertz. And you're probably okay. Like if I put all these things, if I put KP to 400, and I put KD to zero and KS to zero, well, it's probably be just fine. It's not gonna, it's gonna overshoot a little bit, but you may not even feel that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on like a sine wave. Now I've got my full weight on this thing right now. And it's just moving motor number one. And we're looking at how, the way it's tracking. It's tracking pretty good. It's, it's right around there. So you're gonna have to kind of, Every motor is going to be a little different. Every rig is going to be different. So yours are going to be different than mine. But this is a good start. You can start there. You want to make sure that your sine wave is nice and smooth. The green line stays with the blue line as best it can. You could put the KD up a little bit. That might help. And it, it looked like it got some noise when I did that. So I can smooth it out a little bit. Or I can just get rid of those. So I'm getting rid of them. That noise seemed to have gone away. Also, look for clanking, banging, binding up in your rig. Um, things like that could happen. So you can copy your settings from one motor to the other. If I copy these to motor two, it would copy it to motor two and then to motor three. We've only got the two hooked up right now. So I'm going to put this on manual. And I'm going to center it. It's pretty violent when you're using a mouse. And they don't have a different way to do this little button. Uh, but that's just the way it is. Uh, so I'm going to put it on motor 2. That's this motor. And I'm going to do that same thing. The sine wave. And just see how it tracks. Looks like it's lagging a little bit. You can see the green line is not quite keeping up, so it may need a little bit more proportional. That makes it drive faster to the point. So I'm going to put it up a little bit. Let's see what happens. It seems to smooth it out a little bit. Uh, we're getting a little bit on the bottom, but these are parameters you're going to have to mess with on your own rig. Like I said, you can copy these down, use these as a base. But let's move on. Let's actually get this into a game or something like that. So I'm going to put it on manual. I'm going to center it. 
And now we're done. Um, oh, we just need to save it. Save. And I'm going to save it as initial working February 17th, 2024. All right, so there we go. And then we can close this down. We have SMC3 set up. So let's set up SimTools Game Engine. Subscribe, hit the bell, and in your comments, write DMAX controller. All right, guys, so that's how you win the controller box for this rig. Basically, I'm just going to take it out. Whoever wins it out of a drawing out of a hat, I'm going to just cut the, cut the wires, and I'm going to ship it to you. So in the follow-up video to this, sometime in March, this is going to be my next video, I'm going to draw the winner out of a hat. All your names will go into the hat. I'm going to draw it. Whoever wins it, wins it, and I'm going to ship it to you absolutely free so that you can get started. So it's a pretty good prize, right? I'm going to try to do the, the new version of Game Engine after we do this one, but it's going to be on a different video. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to the interface settings. You want to find your COM port, and it, it could say COM4 right here, but we know that on my computer right here, the SMC3 is on COM3. And if you wanted to check it again, you just look here. It says it's on COM3. All right, so we don't need this. In fact, you don't want this running at the same time, or it'll grab that COM port. So... Put it on COM3, 50,000 bits per second, eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit. Eight is the bit range for output, it's binary. And then copy this down and paste it in here in the interface output and do it at 10 milliseconds. Okay, so we wanna save that, um, save the settings. You could create a preset like DMAX um, and then save it. It's the same thing. It's just going to save in there. You make sure that your, your interface is not uh, a JRK, an SNC. This is a serial. So it's a serial port and that's, that's how it's going to talk. Access assignments. <clears throat> now, I got one game, Live for Speed. And I'm in the demo mode, okay? So I, this is brand brand new for this computer. It's in the demo mode and you can use it to play Live for Speed in the demo mode. That helps you set up these things. And then you can buy your plugins and stuff like that for a set of course or any other games that you want. Basically, each motor is gonna be an Axis. Axis 1A is gonna be one motor. Axis 2A is going to be a different motor. We're going to set it up for these different things. So we've got roll, pitch, heave, yaw, sway, surge. We're going to set this up for pitch. So we want both motors moving and we want to set them up just a little bit at a time just to see what they're doing. So we're going to set them both to pitch and we're going to put them both at 10%. So 10% here, 10% here. We're going to save it, and we'll try some output testing. Now, we go to this output testing thing. Nothing's going to happen until you turn it on, and then hopefully your rig will move a little bit. You can see, you can feel it move. Now, we're trying. If we do roll, it shouldn't do anything, and it's not. And this is the, the clear or center button. Now, we did pitch, and we don't know what it's going to do if it's going to go. The wrong way, the right way, it could go like this. We don't know yet. So we're just going to move this cursor just a little bit and see what's going on. I'm looking at the motors. Not doing a whole lot. They both seem to be going in the same direction. Let's turn that off. We'll go back to access assignments, and we'll we'll put it up to let's say 24. That's a nice easy, easy number. 24, 24. We'll save it. Go to output testing. 
turn it on. Now if we did heave, it's not going to do anything. Yaw, nothing, because we don't have any motors. Uh, we don't have anything assigned to that. And surge is acceleration braking. We don't have anything assigned to any of those. What we do have is pitch, and we had it on 10% before. Now, this is a little bit more. I can feel it. Once again, I'm using a mouse, so this is... The game is going to control it a lot smoother than me with the mouse. But there's a lot more power going on. And we have it at 24%. Now remember, this is up a hill and down a hill. Okay, for our second force, we're going to do roll. So we have two motors. Put both those at roll. We're going to do both at about 10%. And we're going to save it, live for speed. We don't even have the game on yet, but we're going to test out. We tested pitch. Now we're going to test roll. So we put it on output testing. Try roll and see what happens. Okay, so it's one motor's going one direction, one's going the other direction, and one's going one direction, one's going the other. So it seems to be working. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go back here. We'll, we'll put this up at about 24% too. Save it. And output test it. Okay. Okay. So that the, I mean, the thing is moving me around, no problem. Let's turn it off. Let's go back to assignments. Let's do surge. That's acceleration. And then let's put it at 24%. You can go you can go way up. We're just gonna try 24% for now. Output testing. We'll turn it on. We'll go down to the surge button. Okay, we'll go to the surge. And it's going pretty good. Alright, so there's one thing I'm gonna show you. Let's just get off of this. Go back to assignments. Now this little orange box here it comes with it that this is called the direction now if I have the surge like this 24% 24% and none of these boxes changed when I go to the output testing and I go to surge only well the motors are doing this instead of going together so it's more acting like uh, like a sway or a roll. Okay, so that's one thing. You can fix that really easy. I just go back to assignments. And like on pitch, I would just check that box and we'll just test it again. Turn it on. Got a surge. Okay, now they're both going up or backwards and braking and this is at 20 percent okay so everything's working okay turn that off and let's go to our last one which force we want sway sway is going to be like if you're going around a, a f the road is flat there's no elevation change, there's no camber to it or anything. The road is flat, you crank on the wheel. The sway is, it's different than the roll. The sway is the force that's gonna kind of try to push you against your seat when you're going around a corner. So we're gonna set this up one more time. I'm gonna set it up for 24 and 24. are going to save it and we're going to test it so we've got the sway 24 percent save it we go to the output testing we're going to turn it on you should feel the rig move and we'll go down to the sway 
put a little bit on. Yep. So this is going to be like me going around a corner on a flat road. And these can be combined. So if I'm here and decide to surge a lot, accelerate or break, you're going to feel that too. The game engine is going to combine all of this stuff um, depending on the data given by the game. Now let's turn this off. Subscribe. Hit the bell. And in your comments, write it. D-Max controller. All right, so where do you get the Live for Speed download? Just go to your search bar, Live for Speed, and we click it here. And this is where you download it. I didn't have to log in or anything. You just go ahead and download it. So Live for Speed, you can download it right here. Now you need to install it and remember where you installed it on your hard drive because when you patch the game for sim tools it's you're gonna have to remember where this directory is and so I found it right here and you basically have to know where the directory is we're gonna try to get this running on the, this computer I've not had a lot of success getting my new Fanatec gear to be recognized by that game so but you can do it in older gear or you could use keyboard and mouse but we're gonna push even further beyond live for speed we're gonna put this this motion rig into a set of Corsa right after that all right so I've had some problems with this if I go to the options thing it says that it can it sees my uh, Fanatec wheel but I can't get it to actually move the access. I've tried and tried and tried and I don't want to um, put it on my old GT or Driving Force 25 but I do have a video on how to do that and I'm gonna link it right here. It's the same thing I'm just I, mean, I can't get it to run on this game just because of um, I can't get the game to run and recognize the fan, the new Fanatec stuff. It's an old game, but it is free, and you can use it to you can control it um, with the keyboard. Like I've got mouse left and right. There's different different ways to do it. It says it sees it, but they just it it doesn't work so it's now it says v3 joystick I, it looks like i got acceleration um but it's not that i didn't try but the ultimate goal here and i know most of you guys have a set of course so that's what my whole thing is about is because it's such a great game so we're going to push beyond this if you do want to watch me setting up things in live for speed I do have it on this other video um, but for now we're gonna push forward so in order to find the plugin you've got to go to the downloads page you can download sim tools you can buy game plugins remember the live for speed is a free plugin you can buy your sim tools license and I've explained this in a couple different videos what I want to do is go down here to all the different games that they have. So we're going to go to Assetto Corsa. And remember, you have to be logged in. I'm going to go ahead and log myself in. And th this is this would be the plugin. I could download it right now. And I'm downloading the plugin. And I'm going to show you how to use that plugin right now. We're just going to leave this zip file alone. We're not going to do anything with it. I'm going to open up a, a new window and we're going to go to C Program Files x86 and we're going to look for sim tools. Now this is where we installed sim tools to begin with. So go S 
sim tools right there in here you have got the game engine the game manager the plugin updater and the sim tools registration and then go to the plugin updater plugin updaters right here I'm gonna move it over just a little bit and this is where you drag in any of the game plugins that you have like I said with Corsa I would just drop it in here it says do you want to replace the current min max file I would say yes but I just got this set up yesterday so that's how you use the plugin updater it should be good to go and for any other games we've got the beam dirt F1, 2010, 12, 14, or 2013. It's going to be the same thing. GT Legends, GTR, whatever your choice. Here's your live for speed. This is the plugin. So you'd want to download it now. You go ahead and download it. And it does say that you want to you want to run the game one time before you play it. I have a set of Corsa right here. I've got it in a window so that we can kind of do a little bit of tweaking on the Sim Tools profile editor. And you can't do anything in the game engine right now um, because the game is running. So, you, so to do anything in the game engine, as far as setting um, power levels and things like that, you have to have it. it the game can't be running. But I do have the game running, but this is how you do in your profile editor. You want to pick this, a set of courses that you're going to have that game patched. We're going to start off by uh, with the intensity level. So the rig should not move too much. I put it in gear, and when I give it a little bit of gas, you can see it moving. And I can, I can feel this. I'm on a 2D screen, but uh, it, it's, it's a little bit weird. It's different than it, it is in VR because the screen is not moving with the game. But you, you want to test your, like, you want to see this. If it's accelerating correctly, if it's braking or if it's moving. And you can do this while the game is running. Say, now I have it on 11 right now. If I turned it up to like, say, 40. Got it in first gear. Give it a little bit more gas. I'm flying right off the track. This is something that you can tune while you're in the game. It's one of the things on the actual power of the car. Now this is a BAC model. It's not very powerful, but if I if I turn this thing up to like say 88%, give it a little bit of gas. I mean you get a definitely a much larger response to what's going on. Into the editor part, I've got the roll at four, pitch at three, heave, I don't have any, sway, I've got it at eight, and surge at 48. If I turn the surge way down to say seven, let's just see what happens. And that's going to be the chair moving around. Very much. Almost the point that I, I can barely feel. And you're gonna to want to do this in a window. That way you can you can adjust these things kind of real time. And I adjust it to 30%. Trying to drive it with the computer and all that at the same time, but take off. I got it at 49. Well, let's do it at 34 percent. You can see that the change movement is not super powerful. 
it's not exactly perfect, but that's because I haven't tweaked it. Now I have the surge on 34. These are all these parameters we're gonna want to play with. Try to drive it real smooth just to begin with it and see if, if your directions are. Uh, the chair is actually leaning the correct way. If it's not, you can flip those switches. And I showed you before. While the traction loss motor is hooked up and connected to the lever, I just don't have it wired in yet. I just wanted to get those two motors working before I went up, went ahead and you know kind of put this one on. But as you can see, you've got your. We just have to uh, center the potentiometer in the middle, and then just do some tweaking. All right, so you guys, now this is the end of the video. I've tried to get as much information as possible across. Hey, she's running, she's working. You can do this too. Now's the time for you to make sure you're subscribed uh, and add your comment, DMAX controller, if you want to try to win that control box. All right, guys, have a good day. I'll see you on track.